Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite tropes in romances, which is the single dad trope. I love a good single dad trope, so I'm so excited to recommend these books to you today. I have another single dad romance rec video, I'll link that down below if you would like to watch it if you have not seen it yet, if you would like more recommendations. But without further ado, these are 10 romance books that have an amazing single dad in them. The first one I want to talk about, the hero is not necessarily sweet, but then he be he becomes sweet, okay? The beginning is very grumpy sunshine though, okay? This is Forever Right Now by Emma Scott. I feel like in a lot of single dad romances, the kids in the situation are older than the age of four, you know? Like that's pretty typical for a single dad romance. And here we have a infant baby um which is i feel like very rare in any romance book you don't really get a lot of infants but sawyer in here he is in college he's studying to become a lawyer and before the start of this book he was very much a partier he would party all the time with his best friends and then one day when he's throwing a party with his friends um there's a knock on the door he opens the door there's no one there he looks down there is a baby in a baby carrier and a note attached to it and this woman that he had a time with previously, um, leaves the baby there and is like, I can't do this. I can't, I can't take care of Olivia. She's yours, your responsibility, I'm done. And so from that point, when he realizes that he has a daughter, he has decided that I need to change my life around. So he does exactly that. He becomes very studious, does not party at all. He dedicates his entire life to his baby girl. Then enters Darlene. Darlene just got out of jail. Um, she was previously in an abusive relationship and her ex got her addicted to drugs and so she is out of rehab and out of jail and she has decided that she's never ever ever gonna go back to that life don't worry none of that is in this book um there's no drug use in here um she's just talking about how she never wants to get back to that and she wants to live a better fulfilling life and so before her boyfriend got her roped into these horrible things she really had a dream of going to san francisco and becoming a dancer and so she decides to do just that she moves to san francisco and who is her neighbor who lives below her? Sawyer. So this is a neighbor romance. They do not get on the right foot because Sawyer doesn't really want any women involved in his life because he does not want women like coming in and out due to Olivia's sake. Like he wants Olivia to have a steady home life. But then one day like Sawyer needs help really badly and watching Olivia. So Darlene volunteers and his walls kind of crumble and break after that point and then things get a little bit more complicated when olivia's mother comes back and wants to have custody of the daughter that he's been taking care of for months and loves and adores and he never wants to get rid of her so i love this one the single dad in here is one of the best single dad romances i've ever read ever like this book is so good, so emotional. Emma Scott will rip your heart out, that's for sure, but she puts it back together at the end, okay? She does. <laughs> Next, I have two books in Neva Altage's Perfectly Imperfect series. Broken Whispers is oh, one of my favorites in the series. I love it so much. This is a romance between Mikhail and Bianca. Mikhail is basically the right-hand man to the leader of the Russian mafia, who is the hero from book one. Um, but don't worry, you can totally read this book as a standalone, by the way. A lot of my friends have jumped to book two because I have said it's it's better than book one. Anyway, so Mikhail in here, he has volunteered to basically marry the uh, most graceful, beautiful daughter, a part of the Italian mafia in hopes to arrange like an alliance between their two families. That daughter just happens to be Bianca and he's been kind of crushing on her for a while because she is a famous ballerina and he watches a lot of her performances. However, Bianca has never met or spoken to him before. Well, she doesn't speak in general because she was in an accident a few years ago, which left her with a back injury that caused her to retire from her dancing career early. And then her throat was injured, her vocal cords were injured. So it's very painful for her to speak. Um, so she communicates a lot through ASL. These two get in an arranged marriage and uh she doesn't know when she marries him that she is actually going to be a stepmother mikhail has a i believe four-year-old daughter that daughter is so willing to let bianca into her life um she sees bianca as this beautiful princess who loves to dance and his daughter loves to dance too and so they connect and bond so easily i loved loved the relationship with his daughter so much book four ruined secrets is also a single dad romance this is another arranged marriage all of these are arranged marriages mafia uh romance this one is age gap luca and isa there's like a 17 year age difference between the two he views her as like a child figure even though she's of age she's older than 18 um because of the age difference he's really grappling and struggling with 
these feelings he's developing for his wife um, because she's so much younger than him. But Issa's gonna do everything in her power to get this man. She's been pining after this man for so long, but things get a little bit troublesome when um, Luca gets in an accident that leaves him with amnesia and he's not able to recollect like anything from his life, including his daughter, which is so devastating too. Um, like when he realizes he has a daughter, he is so heartbroken that he cannot remember her. He had a daughter with his previous wife. He is so devastated when he cannot remember his daughter at all. And he has to pretend that he can remember her um, cause he doesn't want to break his daughter's heart. And oh my gosh, I loved them so much. Another mafia one is Kingdom Fall by A. Zavarelli. This is the romance between Alessio and Natalia. Alessio needs a nanny for his six-year-old son and he ends up hiring Natalia off of a whim during an interview. I believe she's the only person to like impress him. She is also unable to speak. She's another character who is not able to speak due to a vocal cord injury. Um, so she communicates through ASL and like writing notes. She's also experienced a lot of trauma in her life and um, she has a few facial scars and scars all over her body because of that. And so Alessio and his family are kind of considered like mafia royalty. So he's trying to prep his son to take kind of like the mantle for him when the time comes. Um, and so he really wants Natalia to follow a strict set of rules when it comes to raising and taking care of his son. And then things get a little complicated when the two of them start developing feelings for each other, but both of them have a lot of walls up because uh, Natalia is hiding some secrets, some big secrets, and Alessio is also hiding some secrets and just his lifestyle is very dangerous, obviously. His son was super sweet and he like didn't really know how to interact with Alessio because Alessio is his adoptive father and Alessio has no idea how to take care of children and through Natalia like showing him compassion and love and acceptance like it's showing Alessio how to be a better father and I really loved his growth in that. Next I have Falling Embers by Katherine Cowles. This is book number two in her Tattered and Torn series. This is one of her romantic suspense romance series. This is the romance between Hadley and Calder. Hadley has been in love with Calder who is her brother's best friend ever since high school. But in present day, things have kind of happened in their friendship because they have been friends for a long time as well. Things have happened in their friendship to make it very strained and they're not as close as they used to be. One of those reasons is because Calder is very, very, very protective of his twin girls. He has two daughters, I believe they're eight or nine, if I'm not mistaken. So he cares a lot about them and really wants to protect them, especially from losing people. They previously lost uh, their mother in an accident. And so he really wants to like shelter them from losing anybody again. And so he's a little bit, so he's struggling a lot to agree with Hadley's lifestyle. Hadley is a kind of like extreme sport athlete. She does a lot of BMX racing and uh, like skateboard tricks, like, like kind of like, Danger, more dangerous sports. Well, all sports are dangerous, but like the more apparently dangerous sports. Um, and so he's like really struggling with letting Hadley do these things and having a good relationship with her, friendship wise at least, even though he's been totally crushing on her for years as well. So he's very scared of losing Hadley and that's why he's kept her at a distance. However, um, things happened where Hadley develops a stalker, like someone starts stalking her and he realizes like life is short. I need to make this woman mine. I need to protect her from the person who was stalking her. This was such a fast paced romance. I really recommend it. I don't really like suspense romances. However, this series is kind of like the exception for me a little bit. I really love these twin girls. They appear throughout the entire series. I really love them. They have really like different personalities and I love how Catherine Travels wrote them. I really love Calder and how he, was a father and how much care he took for loving these kids and how much Hadley loved these kids. She loves them like they're her own. Like I, I love their relationship as well. Next I have The Bombshell Effect by Carla Sorensen. This is book number one in the Washington Wolves series. This is a football romance series. So our heroine here, she is um, the daughter to this very rich man who owned the Washington Wolves football team. He just recently passed away. And so in his will, he gave his daughter the Washington Wolves team, like ownership of it. She's a little bit nervous, but she's like, what the heck? I'm gonna do it. Um, my dad gave me this, I'm gonna do it. And so she moves into one of his previous owned homes. So the heroine decides to be neighborly one day and make some cupcakes and bring them over to her next door neighbor to try and just make friends. But then uh, the hero of the story, Luke, is, is the owner of said house. And he immediately sees the heroine and thinks she's like some groupie coming to like stalk him. And he's like, no, I'm not for that. You can go away and slams the door in her face, basically. They do not get along. 
whatsoever as neighbors and um, they really push each other's buttons. And things get a little bit more complicated on the meeting day, like when she's gonna meet the players for the first time. Like she's very shocked when her very grumpy neighbor is on the team. The hero in here is a single father. Sutter is so cute and kind of like sees the heroine as like Barbie. I think she calls her Barbie. Like she, Barbie's so cute, I love Barbie. <laughs> and she sneaks away from her home, like the lawn to just go like, go hang out with her on her lawn and her porch. And she kind of is even a little bit meddlesome and kind of like, I guess wants them to be together. So she kind of like pushes them in certain situations, which I thought was so cute. But I really loved um, Luke, the hero as a father. Like he was a great father figure and he did everything, everything, everything for his kid. Next I have a unique one because the kid is older, he's a grown man, but um, this is in Treat Me by Grace Driven because the hero of the story, one of the heroes, um, the older one, <laughs> his father role in here is very prevalent to the story. This is the romance mainly, the romance between Ballard and Lou. Um, so Lou is a widow and she lives in a home with her dad and her sister. And her sister for a while has been talking about this young man who's been courting her for a while. Um, and she's like, don't worry, um, I'm gonna go to his castle with him and meet his father and hopefully we'll get married and then we'll get a lot of money because our home is about to be like torn down basically because we're so poor. But she's also in love with him. She's like, I love this man. I actually want to go and marry him. And so Lou is like, no, 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 you're not going and running off with him by yourself. And so she goes and follows her to the castle that the hero lives at. She's in for shock when she realizes that the castle is kind of like haunted, not really haunted, cursed. And um, she's even more shocked to meet her like sister's suitor's dad named Ballard. He is the man on the cover. Right when his wife, his previous wife, uh, gave birth, she cursed Ballard and her son. Um, kind of like Beauty and the Beast. This is a Beauty of the Beast retelling, by the way. One of my favorite Beauty and the Beast retellings. Um, she basically cursed her son and his father on her deathbed. And so this is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. So Ballard has to fall in love. And Lou is right there. And the two of them fall in love on page. It's beautiful. Their relationship is like everything. I love them so much. People are not wrong when they say that this is one of the best Beauty and the Beast retellings ever because it's so good. There's also another dynamic between Ballard's son and Lou's sister. So there's that dynamic in here as well. It's a little bit more of a side romance compared to Lou and Ballard, but the fact that he is a single father plays a major role in this romance. Next, I have Up All Night with a Good Duke by Amy Rose Bennett. This is the romance between Artemis and Dominic. Artemis is this secret gothic romance writer. She has a pen name. Um, what's her pen name? I can't remember, but it's like something lovelace. It's really cool. I love that aspect in here. Um, and she's also really wanting to start up a woman's college. Like that's her dream in life is to let women have a college education. They end up actually meeting for the first time in a bookstore and they have like a bantering conversation and things like they go the separate ways afterward. And from that point, they can't stop like thinking about each other. And then they see each other at a ball again because <laughs> she's at um, like in society at this point to help her friend. And Dominic is also labeled as the dastardly Duke. And so no woman kind of like wants him. Um, but then once he ends up meeting Artemis, he's like, okay, I need a wife. And I specifically need a mother for my daughter who's kind of like acting out right now. So I'm gonna marry you. <laughs> and so he has to convince her to marry him. And a large chunk of this book is them being married and them trying to figure out how to be a family, especially with his daughter. And I really loved that element in here. Next is Accidentally Compromising the Duke by Stacey Reed. Adeline is our heroine in here and she is really trying to get out of a forced engagement that her family's trying to put her in. And so she has this plan with a friend, like they make up this scheme to get herself like accidentally compromised by this guy who's her friend in hopes that like the engagement will be called off with the guy that she doesn't like. Um, but things get a little bit haywire when she accidentally like goes into the room that she's gonna be compromised. She's like, she's wanting to go into this man's room and like someone will come in and watch her doing stuff with a guy. But then things go like a little bit on a detour when um she's in a room with the wrong man. She's in the room with Edmund who is a Duke and um, she is shocked when she realizes that this is not the right the right room. <laughs> Edmund finds this swell and amazing because he's like, oh my gosh, I finally now have a woman who will be my wife because I desperately need a mother for my two daughters. No woman has really wanted to marry him because of um, his wife passing. Like there's just like, I think this rumor going around that he killed his wife, which is not true. And so no woman will marry him. Um, and so he really just wants a mother for his two daughters and he'll do anything for them. And I, I love this one. So this is a um, like 
compromised woman romance and um, the two of them obviously fall in love while they are married. And the last one that I love to mention is Big Boss by Cassie Mitt. <laughs> and this is another situation where the hero, the dad in the situation, has a daughter who was already grown up. Like she is in college. So the heroine of the story is best friends with that daughter. And the heroine has nowhere to go during winter break. So her best friend and roommate invite her to come stay with her and her dad over Christmas break. And so she does just that. The heroine's friend is out a lot, I think on a, like a job of some sort. So she's in the house a lot alone with her best friend's dad. And it's a forbidden romance between the two of them. I know like the single dad aspect in here isn't really prevalent, um, like all that much. Like it's not like the typical single dad romance that you think of, but I will take any chance to recommend this novella because it's one of my favorite novellas because it is just so good. I love this one. But anyways, there you have it. Those were some single dad romance recommendations for you. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, and please leave your recommendations in the comment section as well. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, but you want to say that you're here, um, you can leave me a white heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all!